I can see how the however many women, six, seven, eight, nine mm -hmm. women, would all have their own quote network mm -hmm. and friends and family, and then going to this small town and people become very invested in yep. you and your project. Let's take a filmmaker that lives in a big city, yeah, and they're starting from scratch, and they've got this great idea, and they're going to launch a Twitter, and it's going to be yeah. about the film. Yeah, what are they tweeting about? Because the film hasn't even been made yet. So the cool thing about um, what we call message testing, which is kind of building the relationship with your audience and learning how they like to be spoken to, is that you can start with all of the stuff that you do anyway. You're reading articles for inspiration, you're doing research, you're finding photos, you're finding reference materials, and you can start to, and you're also looking, I mean, certainly in documentary, you're like looking for people to talk to as part of your research. Um, in, uh, in narrative, you might be going out and researching certain situations or, you know, I don't know, going to a coffee shop and watching people or whatever. Um, I think Dear White People is a great example. Justin wanted to learn about the voice of this main character and how people would react to this voice of this radio disc jockey uh, who, uh, who has a show called Dear White People. So he started the Dear White People Twitter handle and he started tweeting things that he thought she might say. And that helped actually structure his screenplay. Right? And so it was part of his own internal research that he was externalizing. Um, and people, I mean, it, it was a huge, it was a sensation, right? Um, and so I think you take the things that are already happening as a part of your world of inspiration and you are sharing it with the community and you're asking people about it. You might be asking specific people, this is the beauty of Twitter is you can kind of get to anyone, and you can go out and ask specific people specific questions along the way. And you see filmmakers who are really good at building audiences, Ed Burns, while he's writing, he's communicating with his Twitter followers like, what should I name this character? And you're getting people invested in the storytelling all along. It always starts with your own personal network. And I have to be honest, if you're going to be an independent filmmaker, you better be a nice, helpful, collaborative person. You have to build your social capital to live in this world. It's very, very difficult to make an independent film entirely by yourself. And generally speaking, the best ones come from really awesome, bold collaborations. At least that has been my experience. So um, the, the way that you are in the world is part of this. Go out and meet people at places. Um, talk about the things that you're doing and the things that you're thinking about. Volunteer on a couple of your friends' sets. Build some relationships. Offer to do social media on your, on your friend's set so you're helping them build their audience. Altruism is a tremendous way to build a following. If you just started a Twitter account that was entirely dedicated to recommending films that you thought were really excellent to people you thought might really like them, you will immediately gather a following. And that might be something you like to do. Authenticity is a really important piece of this. If you're not a smiley face, happy, exclamation pointy person, don't be that person on social media because you'll hate yourself and you'll stop doing it, right? Find your niche. My friend Caitlin was saying the other day, um, you know, Twitter just doesn't do it for her. She can't quite, that's not, she's not, uh, she is a wordsmith, actually she's a brilliant writer, but not in 140 characters, she feels very limited, but she loves taking photographs. So Instagram has been the place where she's really like found her kind of social media tone and she feels comfortable with that level of interaction and she learns a lot about what people like and don't like along the way. And that I know affects her as an artist as she develops you know, her next script. Um, did that answer your question? It did. We threw the name Ed Burns in there, which I think gets put in all the time, and that's nothing against him. He's a brilliant well, filmmaker, I think it's but not everybody's Ed Burns, you know, sure. I get that. I think it's important to look at people who are good at it, and you can't point at it. There are lots of famous people who do not have a rabid following like Ed Burns, and that the difference is Ed Burns is good at Twitter and they are not. There are plenty of famous people who have attempted and failed at crowdfunding because they don't understand that they have to have a relationship with their audience that matters. Spike Lee's campaign almost did not succeed at first because his initial crowdfunding pitch was lousy and ignored what it would take to get 
his fans, who he had been interacting with for a long time, to convert to crowdfunding supporters. He didn't understand what it took. He altered his pitch video partway through his campaign, and that's when it really stepped up and succeeded, right? He got schooled by his fans on crowdfunding. Right. And I think that's really important, is that the crowd is going to make you a more attended, attentive, empathic artist, ultimately because you're expanding the empathic space for inspiration. You know, you never know what tweet might come at you, what offer might come to you um, that will change the course of your script. I mean, for Like the Water anyway, it was uh, these spaces that were new ways to describe our story, that we rewrote the script to accommodate. Um, and so if you don't like the Ed Burns example, then I will go back to the Justin Simeon, Dear White People example. I like that one. He was not famous to start. <laughs> sure. He just had a really funny, engaging Twitter account that was based on him wanting to inspire uh, himself, mm -hmm. right? And seeking inspiration from the audience. I'll tell you what, I hate it when I have to have the conversation with uh, filmmakers or artists in general who were like, but that's pandering to the audience. And the problem that I have with that statement on its face is that if you think you can pander to an audience, that means you think your audience is stupid. And the logical extension of that is if your audience is stupid, then your movies are stupid, right? Stupid audiences would like a stupid movie, right? So I think it behooves us all to assume that our audiences, the ones that we're seeking, the ones that we're building, the ones that we're interacting with, are at least as smart as we think we are.